How's it going Geometry Kids? Today we are going to look at 4.7 congruence and overlapping triangles. This is kind of just a review of everything we've done. It's tougher problems so. though. Okay, this is tough. Tough with a capital T-U-F-F. -F. That's how you spell tough. I gotta do it the correct way. Um, the reason why it's so tough is just it combines everything from this chapter. Okay? I could probably give you a test and just say do one of these problems and that would be your test. Okay? Mm, I'm not going to do that I'm going to try to be nicer, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, let's take a look at this guy. Number one, A. And by the way, there's no definitions, anything. It's just going to be proofs and some other stuff. So, what's the common side in A, B, D, and D, C, A? Okay. <clears throat> so, I'm looking at these two triangles. Uh, one way you can do this is you can redraw them. So I'm going to redraw. Oh, come on, come on. I'm going to redraw again. This is my A, B, D. And now, when I redraw D, C, A, we'll see if we can't find what they have in common. D. C, A. Well, what do they have in common? Well, they both have A, D in common. Okay? And another nice way to do this is actually if you use like a highlighter, but you can't highlight in your book, which stinks. You know, this is my A, B, D. This is my D, C, A. And where do they overlap? They overlap A, D, right? Got that off there. Can't write in my book. Okay. Ooh, it changed color. Okay. What's the common side of A, B, D, and B, A, C? So now here's A, B, D. B, A, C, oops, looks like this, right? So I redraw that out. I get B, A, C. Looks something like this. And what do they have in common? Well, they both have A, B, right? And again, I could use my highlighter and get A, B. Alright, let's get to the nitty gritty guys. Uh, put on your complaint hats. If you have complaints or bad words to say, please do not say them at school. Say them before you get to school. Mutter them to yourself. Okay. Proof time. Got it. Okay. So I'm going to put my statements, my reasons. Draw a little box. Always put in my given first. ACD is congruent to LBDC by given. Okay, so that's step one. I'm gonna try to redraw that line. I might cheat. I might cheat. Okay. So we're given two triangles are congruent right off the bat. We don't need to use any postulate Y. It's just given to us. We're given the ACD is congruent to B, D, C. Okay, and now what we want to prove is C, E is congruent to D, E. Now a lot of you guys might want to jump in and say, oh, court, C, P, C, T, C, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. But they don't share these two sides, do they? It's just a part of the side. So what we're going to have to do is, we're going to have to, oops, we're going to have to prove, I'm going to color them in, that this triangle is congruent to this triangle first. Okay? I mean, using even different colors so you guys can definitely tell it's congruent to this triangle. Because if we have these two triangles, I can get the sides by C, P, C, T, C. Okay? So how can I prove these two triangles are congruent? Well, they gave us two triangles are congruent, so we're going to have to use C, P, C, T, C. What do we know about the side A, C, and B, D? Well, those are congruent, right? By our cons corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, right? Okay, so we have one side. We definitely need more than that, though. What do you know about these two angles? Well, angle A 
is congruent to angle B also by that CPCTC. And some people don't like it when you do that. I don't mind it. Why well, write two lines for the same reasoning? So now I have a side and an angle. I still need more information. Hmm. What do we know about these two angles? Are they congruent? Why, well, yes, they are. So angle AEC is congruent to angle BED. And that is not by corresponding parts congruent triangles because we don't know these two triangles are congruent. We're still trying to prove that. But we do know they are vertical angles. Okay. We're actually almost there. Okay. Well, we have an angle, an angle side. What can we say about those two triangles then? Well, I think you can say triangle AEC is congruent to triangle bed. That's a bed for triangles to sleep on. By angle, angle side. Okay. Now that we know these two triangles are congruent, what do we know about their corresponding parts? Well, I guess they're rudal, they are congruent. Here's the last step. CE is congruent to DE by CPCTC. Because now that we have those two triangles are congruent, we can say the parts are congruent as well. All right, here we go. We got another one. Statements, my reasons. Okay. So again, we always start off with our given. PS is congruent to RS. And angle PSQ is congruent to angle RSQ. And that is by given. Okay. This one's pretty tricky, guys. We want to prove that QPT. Yeah, I'll color in. I'll color in what we're trying to prove. QPT congruent to QRT, but we don't know any of the angles, any of the sides. We know some here. Look at these two triangles that are just hanging out. What about QRS and QPS? Do you think we could prove those ones congruent? Well, I think so. Because we have an angle and side already. All we need is one more angle or side if it's in the right spot. But what do we know about QS? That's right, QS is congruent to itself by that good old reflexive property. Okay. Now, I have side, angle, I have a side, an angle, and a side, right? So what can I say about those big triangles? So I triangle Q, P, S is congruent to triangle Q, R, S by side, angle, side. I'm just going to add this for fun. Prop. Congruence. Okay. So I have these two triangles are congruent. What does that tell me about these two sides of this triangle that's colored in that we're trying to get? That's right, it tells me that key QP is congruent to QR. You know what though? Because those triangles are congruent, what's it tell me about these angles then too? Oh yeah, they're congruent. So I can say angle PQT is congruent to angle 
RQT. And this is both by corresponding parts are corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Okay. That means I'm only missing one thing. I have an angle on a side. I have to prove this side. And that's by good using good reflexive too. QT is congruent to QT by good old reflexive. And one more step. So now I have a side, an angle, and a side. So that means I can say triangle QPT is congruent to triangle QRT by side, angle, side. Hi right, guys, ready for the tough one? <laughs> Given CAD is congruent to EAD. So this angle is congruent to this one. And angle C is congruent to angle E. Okay. And we want to prove that BD is congruent to FD. <laughs> Here, I'll just draw over them with red. We want BD it's congruent to, I'll use red and green for Christmas. FD, okay. This one is gonna be a doozy. So I'm gonna put down my statements, my reasons. Okay. First statement, as always, is going to be our given. There you go. Easiest points in the world. What am I doing? Okay. So, now, I can't, I have these two angles, and you can see we have these big triangles we can kind of prove. These guys right here, ACD and AED. Okay, we're only missing a side. We have two angles. Where can I get a side, guys? What about AD, this guy right here? Oh, yeah. AD is congruent to AD by our good old reflexive. Okay? Okay. Now I have an angle, angle, and a side. So I'm gonna highlight these real quick just so you can see this. I'm seeing it. so I'm getting this triangle congruent to this triangle right here. Okay, because when I get those, I might have some more information I can use. Okay. Okay. My big piece of advice for you guys, if you see they give you enough information to prove two triangles congruent, do it. Get the triangles congruent. Use some CPCTC to get the other parts of the triangle to get another set of triangles. Because there's three triangles in each one of these sets. You have a big one, a medium, and a little one. So you got to get multiple groups of those triangles congruent so you can get all the pieces. Okay? So, now I can say that my triangle... Uh, CAD is congruent to triangle EAD by, what did we say? Good old angle, angle side. Okay. Now, since I know these two triangles are congruent, I gotta get these little ones congruent. I got to. So now I'm gonna shoot for is this guy. And this guy. Okay. Well, I have an angle. But that's not going to cut it, right? What else do I need? What about this angle right here? Yeah, those are reflect, or not reflect, those are vertical angles, so I can get those. So angle C, D, B is congruent to angle E, 
the app. And that is because vertical angles are congruent. Okay. So I have two angles, I need a side. What do we know about these two sides, everybody? Well, CD is going to be congruent to ED, and that's by, well, remember the two big triangles we had, this guy and this guy? Yeah, they're congruent. So that's by my CP, because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Okay. Now, I have an angle, a side, and an angle of the two little triangles, right? So what can I say about them? Well, I can say triangle CDB is congruent to triangle EDF. And that is by good old angle, side, angle. Okay, now I have those two little triangles, those two little guys congruent. Now what can I say about the parts? That's right, they're congruent because the corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. That's how I get BD and FD. Oops, well I'll leave it. All right, C, P, C, T, C. And that's it guys, enjoy. Proofs away.